Few groups of animals have captured the hearts of people in quite the way that apes have. Their cunning, quirkiness, and strength are renowned worldwide. Among these characteristics, their size and power have been a common aspect of discussion. The idea of a giant, mighty ape has been one that's stretched across nations and cultures, particularly when it comes to the gorilla. This animal is viewed as one of the kings of the jungle, a hulking behemoth that can beat anything in its path. This is all in spite of the fact that the gorilla, despite being no slouch on either size nor strength, isn't actually as imposing as many people make it out to be. 500 pounds and 6 feet tall, it's certainly big by human standards, but doesn't reach the giant sizes of other members of the animal kingdom. There is a primate, however, that existed not too long ago that could very well match the monstrous proportions that we often ascribe to other apes. And today we'll cover that very animal, known as Gigantopithecus. Gigantopithecus, literally meaning giant ape, lived 2 million years ago in China. The species was originally identified when its teeth were discovered in a Hong Kong apothecary shop where they were being sold as dragon bones. To no one's surprise, these teeth didn't belong to a dragon or to any reptile in general. Instead, they were identified as primate teeth. Despite being sold in Hong Kong, the bones actually seemed to be of Chinese origin, or on Guangdong or Guangxi. This discovery was followed shortly after by several others, with bones all originating around southern China. That's not to say there weren't other discoveries outside of China in countries such as Vietnam, Thailand, or India, but these bones were later reclassified as being from species that were only close relatives of this ape. Unfortunately, with the exception of a jawbone, there was nothing else in the way of fossil evidence for this animal. This is due to the fact that this ape occupied rainforests during its stint in the late Pleistocene which are notorious for being areas of poor fossilization. What little actually has been recovered was only done so as rodents such as porcupines brought these bones to caves, where they chew on them for extra nutrients. Still, if mammalian paleontology has taught us anything, it's that scientists can do a heck of a lot with just some teeth. The classification of this animal has been a surprisingly contentious topic since the discovery of the first bones in 1935. However, a common thread to where it could be placed on the ape family tree seems to deal with its close alliance to the Indian genus Sivapithecus, an ape that lived just a few million years prior to Gigantopithecus during the Miocene. This genus, from the remains that have been found, closely resembles an orangutan, specifically in front of its skull. These similarities, among others, have led scientists to place this group as sister or even ancestral to living orangutans, and as a result, Gigantopithecus too would have slotted in neatly inside of the group. Sure enough, peptide sequence on a Gigantopithecus molar only further confirmed this association, placing Gigantopithecus in the Ponganae subfamily of apes, the same one as the orangutan family we have today. It would have likely shared a common ancestor with modern orangutans around 10 to 12 million years ago. Over the years, scientists have proposed a few different species that fall under this genus, but many of these have been instead reclassified as species of different but closely related Asian apes. Today, there's only one recognized species of Gigantopithecus, and that's Gigantopithecus blackie, which evolved over 2 million years ago during the late Pleistocene. Given the fragmentary remains of the animal, calculating the size of Gigantopithecus has been an understandably challenging ordeal. Estimates on how big this ape could be have been made by comparing the dimensions of extant apes such as gorillas and orangutans. Currently, this animal is proposed to have stood at over 9 feet tall, with some calculations putting it closer to 10 feet. But keep in mind what I just said two sentences ago. It was proposed to have stood at that height, meaning that would have been its bipedal height, as if it were standing like the silly little orangutan over here. But as we know from modern apes, this animal would have, in life, rarely maintained this posture. While many Gigantopithecus depictions have it standing straight up, given that its relatives also spent the majority of their time on four legs, it's safe to assume that the same followed with Gigantopithecus blackie. Its regular quadrupedal height would have been closer to around 175 centimeters, or 5 foot 9. So for those average guys like myself, too tall to claim manlet status but too short to be considered tall, we could just cope by saying we're as tall as a Gigantopithecus. Tall as it was, this creature was no slouch in terms of weight either. In this case, however, we can find an even more varied range of measurements. These go from just a little over 400 pounds to over a whopping 1300 pounds. This makes the ape anywhere from lighter than an average gorilla to, well, a lot bigger than a gorilla. Recent estimates bring the ape to be about 200 to 300 kilograms, or 440 to 660 pounds. This puts it a lot closer to that gorilla weight ballpark, but still heavier by a good deal. 
and compared to the local primates of the region, this would have remained a true titan. Unfortunately, given the comically scant remains of the animal, it's difficult to suss out just how Gigantopithecus looked in real life. Most reconstructions put it as far more orangutan-like in appearance as opposed to something like a gorilla, which makes sense given its close relation to Shipipithecus and orangutans. By now I'm sure we're all aware of the gentle giant trope that's been so prevalent with large apes. Gorillas and orangutans, despite their impressive sizes, are known for being mainly herbivorous animals. And surely enough, this trend continues with Gigantopithecus. Analysis on the ape's dentition showed that its diet mostly consisted of bamboo, roots, twigs, and other hardy plant material. With thick enamel and sturdy jaws, it was well adapted to chewing and consuming these items. It wasn't all just tough foods for the ape, however, as there is evidence pointing to the fact that they partook in fruits from time to time as well. A good comparison to make to the Gigantopithecus is, interestingly enough, the giant panda. Both these animals spent a lot of time at the consumption of abrasive, nutritionally poor yet abundant foods such as bamboo. The thing is, however, the Gigantopithecus' signature diet may have played a role in its demise. Gigantopithecus was an animal well adapted to heavily forested environments, where the majority of its food sources could be found. Unfortunately, as the Pleistocene progressed and temperatures began to cool, these areas became far less densely populated by trees, instead morphing into grasslands with more open regions. Gone were the tree-based food sources that were a staple in these apes' diet, and with the lack of items such as bark on the menu, the genera needed to change its diet, and fast. There is evidence to indicate that later Gigantopithecus members bore adaptations to tackle some of the food in these new environments, though these changes were not significant and did not occur expediently enough to allow the genera to survive much further later into the epoch. For one, while their relatives could get to food sources such as treetop shoots, Gigantopithecus' size made scaling trees a difficult if not impossible task. Cliché and lame as it is to say, the animal's size may have very well played a role in its downfall, and this mighty ape went extinct around 295,000 to 215,000 years ago. And for those of you wondering, no, humans likely never came into contact with Gigantopithecus. Although our fossils show up in Africa as far back as around 300,000 years ago, even the most liberal estimations put our date of arrival in Asia at somewhere around 70,000 years ago, meaning that we'd have missed this animal by quite a bit of time. On one hand, it's a shame we never met Gigantopithecus, but let's be honest, we would have probably started killing them the way we do to all megafauna we encounter. Still, Gigantopithecus does live on in our memories, albeit in a strange way. This comes in the form of various anthropoid cryptids around the world, such as the Yeti of the Himalayas or the Sasquatch or Bigfoot of the United States. The descriptions of these animals mark a striking resemblance to the perceived appearance of the Gigantopithecus, at least if the creature was standing up. That said, it makes no sense that a rainforest ape would migrate to the Himalayas or even cross the Bering Strait into the Americas. Boring as it is to say, this is probably just an interesting coincidence and nothing more. If it's any consolation, these Gigantopithecus' cousins are alive and… not very well at all, actually. Which is sad because orangutans are great animals. Currently, the biggest danger to living orangutans comes in the form of logging and deforestation, destroying these animals' as homes. There's only so much we can do as regular people, but one thing we can do is be conscious of the products we buy containing palm oil. 90% of this oil comes from the two islands where all living orangutans live. So one thing we can do is be more conscious of what foods we buy that contain it. I found this app recommended by the Oregon Zoo, which can scan products to check if they use sustainable palm oil. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but I figure this is something we can do to at least try and help orangutans. I'll leave a link to the app in the description down below. Sorry for getting preachy at the end there, but I really like orangutans and I really don't want them going the way of Gigantopithecus. Thanks for watching the video. 